Hi guys, welcome back to The Pulse, I'm Marcel. Today we're gonna to talk about specifically a potential downside to NAD boosting, at least for some people. Um, we've talked about the many benefits that I've experienced, others have experienced, health benefits, doctors using NAD boosters uh, to treat various heart conditions and other ailments. But there is one caveat to all this that I wanted to address head on a bit and at least get some discussion going here in our community about the potential downside of NAD boosting for some people. And those are people with active cancer. Now, many people have weighed in that they've had positive experiences I have a relative, a very close relative, that had thyroid cancer, and I was very nervous about them taking, and still am, taking NMN. But it turns out their thyroid medicine was recently reduced after a couple months on NMN, and also their blood pressure medicine cut in half. So there are some anecdotal evidence from that relative and many other people in this community that have experienced actually anti-cancer benefits from NAD boosting and not the opposite. Now, there have been a couple cases where people did have a recurrence of a couple different types of cancer. So that's out of a, many people. That's out of uh, hundreds of people that report back, a couple thousand people taking NMN in this channel community, but still worth pointing out and bringing up and, and discussing. Now, when I asked Charles Brenner, he's the biochemist that discovered the vitamin potential of NR. And I asked Charles Brenner about the cancer connection, and I really was surprised by his answer because what I thought he was gonna say was, yeah, there's, there's really no connection. Those were my studies, we don't know enough. But he went much further than that, espousing the benefits of NAD boosting in general to prevent cancer. Listen to this. What's the latest? Is there anything you can tell us? How can we, besides quit smoking, guys, <laughs> What, how can we avoid this or, you know, maybe maximize any treatments that people are getting? You know, is it, here's a good one. Is NR safe if you've had cancer? Yes. So um, NR, you know, we showed um, years ago that uh, NR is protective against chemotherapeutic neuropathy. The data were strong enough to... Um, you know, support a uh, clinical trial in, in that space that was initiated at University of Iowa, my former um, institution. There are other folks that are planning subsequent trials. Um, we know that higher NAD status is um, AIDS uh, DNA repair. And um, we've shown that, and, and Donna Hammond and others have shown that um, NR doesn't block the effectiveness of um, cancer chemotherapy. It, it um, suppresses um, tumor formation. There was a, a very low quality study that um, gave everybody this big you know, metastasis uh, scare, but then uh, there's a subsequent study that shows that when you look at carcinogenesis and and um, the hallmarks of cancer that higher NAD status is protected. So, so we think that higher NAD status is really, you know, important for prevention of cancer, and um, that it, you know it's not going to um, inhibit effectiveness of cancer treatment or. Or, or anything like that. So I was actually quite surprised that Dr. Brenner went even further than I thought he would and said, look, there's a lot of evidence to suggest that NED boosting can prevent cancer. And in some cases, it can even treat cancer. I talked to Dr. Shi about this topic and he stated from his experience, NED boosting can actually help along some types of treatments for cancer and also chemotherapy. In other words, chemotherapy destroys uh, the DNA. And since NMN can repair the DNA, this can help you recover sooner from chemotherapy, which can, as we know, can be pretty harsh for some patients, for most patients. So there are some benefits if you're treating cancer to actually boosting NAD levels simultaneously. But again, if you have active cancer, we don't recommend you should take NMN. Matter of fact, we don't suggest you should take NMN or any NAD booster in general. Talk to your doctor, and if need be, find an oncologist or a functional medicine doctor who's open-minded to NAD if you want to pursue that path. Maybe Dr. Shi can help you if you get in touch with him and point you in the right direction. Now, 
as well as Dr. Brenner, Dr. Shi went into detail into different ways that NAD boosting can help prevent cancer. He named three different pathways. There's a lot of uh, evidence that boosting NAD can, well, likely can help uh, the prevention of cancer. That's because NAD is required to repair damage the DNA. And as you know, uh, DNA mutates, and that's the major reason for the development of cancer. And if the DNA repair mechanism is works better, you are more likely to be able to prevent the cancer from developing. So that's the first uh, uh, point. The second point is, uh, when the NAD level is optimal, the immune system works better. So you have a better anti-tumor immunity. And so we all have cancer cells in our body. And we do not, not every one of us develops cancer. That's because our immune system is constantly surveying our body for the presence of cancer cells and eliminating them uh, when they are encountered. And the third potential mechanism that NAD can help pre uh, cancer prevention is the reduction of inflammation. Uh, inflammation is uh, one of the underlying um, causes of many uh, different diseases, including cancer. So overall, I think the cancer is really, well, NAD is really important for cancer prevention. But when it comes down to a patient who has active cancer, um, we don't really know uh, whether NAD boosting is going to be beneficial or harmful. Because in a patient with active cancer, you have two opposite forces in play. One is the anti-tumor immunity DNA repair, and the second one is the potential increase of cell proliferation, including cancer cell proliferation. And whether the anti-tumor immunity force and the cancer proliferation force uh, when in a patient is really very difficult to predict. And I don't think what Ever, ever going to know whether NAD boosting is going to be beneficial or harmful uh, to a cancer patient because it's so person dependent and it depends on the cancer types, it depends on uh, the immune system of the person. And yeah. so for that reason, I think we want to take NAD to prevent the cancer, yeah. but we want to be very cautious uh, as to whether someone should take NAD uh, products when cancer is active in the person. That's kind of what we know uh, up to date. So he went into specifics and he has thousands of cases of NAD testing and he's in touch with a lot of doctors using NAD boosters right now to treat patients. So he's got a lot of experience in this area. Now, for what it's worth, I'll also share a couple comments from David Sinclair from his podcast where he talked about a couple of my studies that potentially showed a connection with NAD boosting, but he was kind of debunking this concept in general as well and really saying the same as others have said, that we just don't have enough evidence. We certainly don't have anything definitive to show a connection, although there is some evidence showing that the NAD boosting can feed a cancer somewhat, at least in mice, if they're predisposed to cancer. Here's David Sinclair. Well, so most of these studies, actually there's only two main studies have been done in mice. So here's, here's what they are. There was one, again, out of Washington University by a different group that found that knocking down the levels of NAD in brain tumors slowed the growth of the tumor. And unfortunately, the new story ended up being, oh, NAD causes cancer, which is not the same. Right, that's the complete opposite. So that study, uh, I, I wouldn't put a lot of stock into, but there is there is one other study that came out in 2019 by Naccarelli, uh, and they found that NAMPT, this NAD boosting gene, uh, it increases the number of senescent cells and makes them more inflammatory. 
giving out these SASP proteins, as they're called, the senescence-associated secretory phenotype is the word. But also there were mice that were predisposed to pancreatic cancer. And when given NMN, they developed more precancerous and cancerous growths when they consumed this NMN. Exactly how it works, we're not sure, but it might be because it was downregulating a tumor suppressor gene called P53. But remember, we fed NMN to mice, the normal mice, not predisposed. And if anything, they live longer and healthier. So it's a question whether it's this predisposition that's the difference. So my personal approach to this is to try to eat as healthy as possible. When I started to NAD boost, looking at all of the evidence that was out there, I said, you know, if I'm going to do this, I'm going to try to eat as many organic vegetables as I can. I'm going to try to exercise as much as I can, sleep well. I'm going to practice wellness, a wellness lifestyle as much as possible, not only to maximize my NAD boosting impacts, but to also fight off, ward against any potential downsides of of boosting my NAD uh, a lot more than it would normally be at my age. And I do suggest you do the same. Eat healthy, exercise, sleep well, and take your vitamins. Good luck to you. Stay tuned. See you next time.